Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. Uh, I think it is not a coincidence that as we were talking about food and food drives and all of these things, the health nugget is also dealing with food. So uh, we want to have a word of prayer as we begin our health nugget. Uh, we do want to have a clear mind so that um, whatever we are to learn for this health nugget, we want to make sure that it is um, capable of being applied to ourselves, not by our own uh, hindering or any uh, other uh, you know, thing that will keep us from uh, receiving a benefit from these words. So uh, as we begin our study, let us have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you at the foot of your throne yet again, and we desire to be that of a good help, a people who actually follow the laws that have been given unto them. Not only the laws which was given at Sinai, but the health principles which are given unto us for us to be a, in a perfect nature, even as Christ was. We pray that as we seek to understand what it is that you desire us to do in regards to having better health, even complete health. We pray that your Holy Spirit will um, help us in our minds and in our hearts to make the right decisions, to choose that which is right because it is right, because you have said it is right. And we thank you for giving us an opportunity to look at health today, even on your Holy Sabbath day. But in all, we ask that Jesus Christ may be seen and that Jesus Christ may be uplifted. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, how many of us believe that what we eat has a substantial effect on how we are in our daily lives? How many of us believe that um, the various fruits and vegetables that we eat on a day-to-day -day basis can affect how you are to someone else? Uh, a lot of times um, we may eat something that we felt like uh, was very good and in doing so as we leave for the day we're in good spirits. But the same can happen if you eat something very bad. Has anyone ever eaten something that was not good and you just had a bad day because of that? Mm -hmm. I do it a lot. Um, and it shows that food directly affects our, even our mentalities. Uh, food can direct or affect our mentalities, but it can also affect how we react to someone. And so the Bible actually discusses a little bit about this. We will go to Proverbs. If you can turn in your Bibles to Proverbs, we will go to Proverbs chapter 13. And God realizes that food is able to affect a person so much so that he told Adam and Eve to consider something about a tree. It wasn't that the fool had the ability to make them eat, but it was the fact that God said, this fool is, shouldn't be eaten, right? Mm -hmm. So in Proverbs 13, we will see a little bit of, on this idea. Proverbs 13, starting in verse one, the Bible reads, a wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Verse two says, a man shall eat good by the what fruit of his mouth. by the fruit of his mouth but the soul of the transgressors shall eat what violence. violence so god here is 
showing us that when you speak or when you say something, it can be related to fruit. Do we see that? A man shall eat good by the what? Fruit of his mouth. Is it talking about a man shall eat good by the apple he's holding? No. The Bible is discussing that how you are, what you say, your words are like unto fruit. Hmm. Now, the Bible says that a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of who? The transgressors. The transgressors, what do they eat? Violence. They eat violence. Now, the Bible is tying together good fruit, and then on the other half, it's tying eating violence. Do we see that? So, good fruit can be a benefit for someone, of course, or your words, what you say, something that comes out of your mouth which promotes goodness, can do a lot for you yourself. But now the Bible is talking about a transgressor that eats violence. What does violence have to do with fruit? Anybody? Say that's what again? What does violence have to do with fruit? Because the Bible is doing a comparison. It's saying, let's read it again. It says, a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. And then it goes to describe another person. It says, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. Now, why, why is it using violence when we was just talking about fruit? Anyone? Yes. But also in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 17, it says, He that speaketh truth short for righteousness, but a false witness deceit. Okay. So why is it talking about violence when we were just talking about fruit? I think that we see fruit constantly uh, used in the Bible to, to as a symbol for our characters. Okay. Really in a positive way, but bad fruit also could be the opposite of that. Okay, so bad fruit can be the opposite of good fruit, right? Correct. So if, if bad fruit is the opposite of good fruit, then violence would tie to being bad fruit, right? Yes. Now what if you're saying, or what if you go up to something and go up to someone and you say something that makes them feel very bad. What do you think just happened there? Violence. You just you just gave them violence. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. How do I know? Well, Jesus says you shall know them by their fruits. Mm -hmm. If you will know them by their fruits, them saying something bad can equal to them giving out bad fruit. Mm -hmm. Do we see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to Proverbs 12. You're in Proverbs 13, 12 should be right there on the page if you have uh, the same Bible, well not the same Bible, but a Bible like mine. Proverbs 12 should be right on the same uh, double pages. And we'll go to Proverbs 12, verse 13. When you get there, say amen. amen. Proverbs 12, 13 says, The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Verse 14, a man shall be what? Satisfied, Satisfied with good fruit, by or with good. good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. So now what is this talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, this is describing the same thing we are talking about. This is talking about good fruit. But not only is it talking about good fruit, it's saying that if you are a person that speaks good fruit, you will be satisfied. Do we see that? Mm -hmm. It says a man, verse 14, a man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. So now we see how good fruit ties into what you say or your mouth. A person that speaks good or a, a person who only says good things is satisfied because the fruit is good. 
Have you ever ate good fruit or got something from the store and as soon as you ate it, you felt satisfied? Yes. You said, this fruit is so good, I'm good for the day. I'm happy to everybody. Now, on the other hand, have you ever bought a fruit that cost so much and it looked so good, but when you ate it, you said, bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? Yes. Where you you so angry because they promoted this fruit and shined it up and put water drips on it and it's a certain color and when you bite it, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. That is the same thing that happens when you speak evil to someone. Mm -hmm. You shine up this good fruit, you put water drops on it, you give it a certain color, a certain look. And when you give it to someone and they try it, they say, bleep, 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 bleep. Where am I getting with this example? Well, again, you shall know them by their fruits. Jesus says that you should be presenting fruit unto people. Now, if you shine up and you look like a good fruit, then in turn, you speak evil. You just gave someone a non or a false advertised fruit. A fruit that looks very expensive, right? We're supposed to be children of the most high. Is God rich? Yes. Very rich. So if you're presenting yourself as a child of God, you must be very expensive. But if you're very expensive, the taste should go with how much you cost. Amen. Let us go to another verse. Let us go to Proverbs 18. Let me share two more verses. Two more verses on this idea of fruits and speaking. Proverbs 18, we will begin in verse 20. Proverbs 18, verse 20. The Bible reads, A man's belly shall be satisfied with what? The fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. And then it says, death and life are in the power of the what? Tongue. Tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So now the Bible is tying together death and life with fruit. This has a broader reach now. Because now death and life relates to good and bad. Right? Good and bad what? Words. Fruit. Yes, words. You are correct. Good and bad words. So now if you're a person who speaks good and you give good fruit from your mouth, do you know that you're actually giving life? How do we know that we're giving life? Jesus himself said, why callest thou me good? There is none good but God. Is God life? Yes. Definitely. So if you're speaking good, you're actually giving life. Positivity. Now what if you're speaking bad? What if the fruit is bad that you're giving unto someone? you giving death and deception. deception and deception, right? And this was Satan's whole, uh, his whole plan in the beginning. What Satan said was enough to lead them to reap what? Yeah. Death. death. What death. Satan said, Satan said, do this. God is a liar, right? And when they ended up doing that, they reaped what Satan had already told them. Death, the bad fruit. God said, don't eat the fruit. Why? The fruit itself is death. When they ate it, they started dying. It wasn't because of the fruit, but it was because the fruit was bad from what God had told them. Don't eat that. It's bad, right? Did the fruit look good, though? Yeah. Yes. Definitely. The fruit looked amazing. Here we go with false advertising again, right? Now, 
as we consider this idea of giving fruit, the Bible actually says that we're supposed to be those who are giving fruit. We're supposed to be those who are giving those or giving people on the outside fruit. But for what reason? What reason? Well, in Proverbs 10, we will find out. Proverbs 10, our last verse before we close. Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10. We, we're finding out that good and bad fruit is more than what we may think it seems. Good and bad fruit equates to life and death. Proverbs 10, we will read in verse, uh, we will start in verse 18, reading down. The Bible says in Proverbs 10, verse 18, He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words there wandereth, or there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little wrath, or little word, sorry. Verse 21 says, the lips of the righteous does what? Feed. It feeds many, but fools die for want of wisdom. wisdom. So now we see why we're supposed to be giving fruit, or why we're supposed to be speaking good. Because the lips of the righteous feeds many. Do we see that? The lips of the righteous feed many, right? What are we feeding? Life. Life. Did you know that we're not only feeding fruit to these people, but we're also feeding bread? Did you know that? Bread of life. The bread of life. Jesus says, I am that bread. So with good words, you're able to give life unto someone because that life was the bread that you gave them. That life was Jesus Christ. Those good words was Jesus. Anything good you say that promotes happiness, that promotes someone who wants or someone to feel better about their day, that's Jesus Christ. Don't you know Jesus Christ wanted everyone to feel better about their day? So much so that he went to every single home and spoke words or spoke fruits that was able to heal them. Mm -hmm. of various diseases, various illnesses. Do we understand? Mm -hmm. So when Jesus goes to the house all the way in the back in Lancaster in the corner, just to say, get up, he actually went all the way to Lancaster in the corner where the snakes is at <laughs> to say, try this apple. Mm -hmm. Try this banana. Try this bread. And by him doing so, the person was able to receive life. But not only did they receive life, when they jumped up, hooray, happy, skipping, jumping because they were healed, they were satisfied. Amen. They were satisfied. Why? Because their want, and as the last verse said, fools die for want of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Their want for wisdom was satisfied. Amen. How do I know? Because before that, they didn't know why this illness had came upon them. Or some of them didn't know. They would say, why am I sick? Or why am I lame? And they wanted to know who could heal them. I want wisdom on who can heal me. Who is the best physician to heal this illness? So as Jesus went to the home and gave them the fruit, he satisfied their want for wisdom. And in doing so, they stopped being fools because of Jesus Christ. So for us, it's the same issue. We don't want to be fools. So if we don't want to be fools, wisdom or this wisdom on fruit and words should satisfy us enough to go and give fruit to someone else or go and give bread to someone else. Amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So I pray that uh, Jesus' life is not taken in vain. But not only Jesus' life, what Jesus said, his words, his fruits would not be taken in vain. Because the fruits that he gave to you, he expects you to give fruit to somebody else. Not just any fruit, good fruit. Amen? Yeah. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come before you and we understand that fruit is not just fruit. You have shown us that fruit can be our words, our sayings, the things that we let come out of our lips, as the Bible says. And our mouths can be the grocery store, and we may not consider that. For every time we desire to say something, we have to consider, is this the fruit someone would want to buy? Is this the fruit someone would want to taste? Because if it is not, and it is rotten, and it looks good, we may be the reason why someone does not go to the grocery store again. We pray that Jesus Christ was uplifted in the study and that he will continue to be uplifted throughout the remainder of the Sabbath hours and the remainder of this day. And we pray that you were honored and that as a people, we see the reality of our words and what we should and shouldn't say. So now as we transition, we pray that you will please be with our minds, that your Holy Spirit will continue to dwell with us and open up our hearts for the message that you have presented to your manservant to give unto us. These things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.